Hello, my name is Alexander Kerry. Welcome to the program. The art platform Isolatia in Kiev welcomes a legend of photography with the exhibition called An Outward Glance, Christopher Makos on Andy Warhol's Epoch. Christopher Makos makes the audience dive into the 70s and 80s New York scene. He's joining us today in our studio to talk about art, underground culture and Ukraine. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Uh, you travel all around the world. You went uh, into, like, your work was exhibited in the Tate Modern, in the Whitney Museum, and now you uh, show your work in Isolatia. Uh, why Isolatia? Why this platform? Well, uh, it was um, sort of like the movie Accidental Tourist. Um, the founder of Isolatia, uh, Luba Mikolova, is a great friend of mine and a collector. And um, this exhibition that's here in town at the foundation, uh, actually just finished at the Ferragamo Museum in Florence, Italy, one of the great art capitals of the world. But this exhibition actually started uh, over a year and a half ago and traveled around the world with a company called Ports 1961, a fashion house. And um, it has been at all the major capitals. It's been in London, Shanghai, Beijing, um, um, Hong Kong. It's been everywhere. and. The Ferragamo Museum said, well, it was finishing there, and I spoke to Luba, and I said, well, it's going to come back to New York, but it's already in Europe. And she said, why don't we just take it and take it? It's so close. It's Italy, mm. Ukraine. So we thought, what a good idea. And then once we started that, the dialogue began with her curator, and then the curator and I spoke, and we thought, let's take part of what was at the Ferragamo Museum take some other pieces, put it together, and bring it. So this show is a really special show that's been everywhere. And so this sort of artistic provenance, the history of this exhibit is, is very strong. And uh, the show is about identity. And so it's a particularly poignant moment to take a show like this that's an American show, which is having issues with its own identity, and to bring it to the Ukraine, which also has issues which is, about identity. Which was, which was uh, my, my, my question. So first, does it mean that Ukraine is on the verge of international art recognition, or especially uh, Kyiv? And, um, and second, yes, Ukraine is also in search of identity. How would you, how would you see it? How would you define this? Well, I mean, um, the photographs that are in this show, especially the, uh, the altered image pictures, which Warhol and I did in 1981. So for the viewer to understand, it's Warhol uh, pictures in, in, in black and white and uh, made up and... and well, he, he's feminized. I mean, this sort of shorthand would be, oh, these are drag photos. But they're not, not actually drag photos. They, they're, they are photographs that are... The series is called Altered Image, the idea of altering somebody's image. And they deal with this issue of identity in the same way that the artist Cindy Sherman plays with identity in her work. Uh, this work, or conversely, or correctly so, myself and Paul Soberg, we have an alter ego identity, which is called the Hilton Brothers, that we play with identity myself, ourselves. So this, this exhibit speaks to that idea of identity. And it, although the photographs were taken in 1981 and were referenced to the 1921 collaboration of Marcel Duchamp and Man Ray, uh, that subject matter of identity is always, always, has been throughout history a contemporary subject matter. And I thought this was particularly a special moment to show these pictures, considering what's going on in the United States, what's considering what's going on in the Ukraine. And yes, if this kind of subject matter elevates the idea of an emerging art scene or bringing up the art scene in Kiev and the Ukraine, better for it, and I'm happy for this occasion. Part of the um, photos of the exhibition are a glimpse into the intimate party of, 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 the, of the 80s. Um, do you see such phenomenon as uh, pop art or punk or that kind of thing happen to that. You see an underground uh, culture here in Ukraine uh, since, since you're there, for example. Um, well, to have an underground, you have to have a dysfunctional society. And the underground emerged in New York City because the city was not well managed, uh, real estate values were very high, and uh, when when you have a lot of discordance 
the possibility for an underground exists. And from my brief stay, and I've only been here for 48 hours, I would think that there is a somewhat of a discordance in, in Kiev and in this country from what I can see and what, from what I hear. And so this, the, the city especially is especially ripe for a serious underground. And I don't mean that in a political context. I mean that in an artistic context. I mean, if everything is perfect and the world is perfect, it's hard to have an underground because there's barely no need for it because I guess beauty is everywhere. Uh, and so I, I think that Kiev is certainly ripe for this underground. And foundations like uh, the uh, is the Leatsia Foundation is a perfect place for the underground to become legitimate. And that's why I'm so honored and it's such a pleasure to be here and to be showing at this foundation. There is a sort of a trend these days since last year, more or less, uh, for the fashion world to have eyes on Ukraine, Ukraine style, Ukrainian aesthetic. Um, what's, what's your uh, view on it? What, what did you what did you saw in like Ukrainian style and youngsters uh, today? Well, I, I noticed that the um, the women are really there's a uh, you know sometimes in cultures you see there's an equal amount of beauty in men and women, but I have to say that the women really dominate this country. I mean, tall, long legs, quite beautiful. Um, and uh, the question was about about the style the style of of, of, young, of young people and what what, yeah. you, what did you well, they, they have their own style mm. and that's great they, they don't seem to be copying other styles and the great thing about being having a style is to have your own personal style and I've noticed that a lot of the young Ukrainian kids and the people that I met like at the foundation you have a great sense that they Sure, they're referencing other cultures, but they have taken that reference and made it their own, which is the first sign of an emerging culture. That's why I was encouraging Luba and the people that are around to really brand whatever they're doing uh, with the brand made in the Ukraine. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you have a strong brand here. You just have to build on that strength and go forward from that. And um, coming back to Isolatia itself, it's more than a than a than a show showroom. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, it's also a platform. Uh, it's also a platform which has its own history, which is obviously you you, you know the history. Like that has been kicked off out of Donetsk because of yeah. of of the war. Uh, do you think that art needs tough situation, needs obstacles to create, as you said, this functional society? for uh, to underground culture to emerge? Well, it certainly helps. You don't always have to help have it, but it certainly helps to have this because um, through struggle, and it is seen always in a political context, through struggle, something emerges that one didn't really expect. And I even mentioned this to Luba, the idea that her foundation was kicked out of Donetsk. At the moment, it was a terrible thing. It wasn't a good thing. But now, now the foundation has this has a, a much bigger platform that they can t speak through in a, being in a major capital. So, sure, it was terrible that this happened, but things happen for a reason, um, and that that story is an incredibly complex story that I'm not really. Uh, I can't address as much I know about it, but I think it's a good thing for for conflict to be uh, uh, in some area, not always, but it is helpful for the emergence of new arts for sure. And uh, this is going to be my my last question. So this is part of an exhibition. Uh, what's what's next? Do you plan to do another exhibition? Do you plan to to, to travel to continue to well, travel the, with this exhibition? What has happened is this is an ongoing uh, discussion and a question because uh, much to our surprise, it has been so well received. We did some really special things on the first night, and then we had a second night, and of course, it's going to be up until all through early October, from what I understand. So I suggest people to go there to, uh, to see if they, if they can take the conflict out of their own lives and see that it, it, not to be afraid of identity and to be who you are. And so we're, we're discussing, and later I have a meeting with Luba about what are we going to do with this and where are we going to take this next and how are we going to take it? Is it going to be an online thing? Are we going to 
do it actually in a print version because both myself and Paul Soberg and the people that are, were all together, we've been documenting this whole thing. And so we're going to take our view like f we've never been here before. So this completely fresh take from two New Yorkers about what we see. And we're probably going to give it back to you guys and show you who you are and hopefully give you a new identity of yourselves. Thank you. Thank You're you very welcome. much for this interview. It was a real pleasure. That was Christopher Marcos, Talking Art and Ukraine. Thank you. Uh, stay tuned for the rest of the program. Yeah.